Let us create a very simple for loop example. We're going to create a numeric control. It says number of times to run. And a numeric indicator which shows the current iteration. Much like with the while loop, we create the for loop via the structures palette. When we select our for loop, we can then drag to encompass a certain amount of code within our for loop. And again, we can hook up our loop iteration terminal, which tells us the current loop iteration. And we have an additional terminal called the loop counter which we use to decide how many times to tell the loop to run. Notice how in this case the for loop does not have an end condition terminal. It will run exactly this many times and then stop. So if we wish to run it 10 times and we were to watch it run with highlight execution turned on, let's observe that the loop iteration begins at 0, 1, 2, as we watch it on the front panel, we see the current loop iteration running, and it should automatically stop when the iteration gets to 9, indicating that the loop has run exactly 10 times. Now, as mentioned, with LabVIEW 8.5 and higher, the for loop had some additional capability added. If we right-click on the border of a for loop, we can choose Conditional Terminal. Notice how the icon in the top left changes to indicate that there is a stop sign and a conditional terminal is added. So let's make this for loop behave more like a while loop. In order to do that, we're going to create a stop button on our front panel. So from our Boolean palette, we're going to choose stop button, place it down. We're going to also place a time delay in our loop. Choose the wait function, put it inside our loop, and create a constant so that it runs 500 milliseconds. And of course, finally hook up our stop button to the end condition terminal. Notice while we're looking here that if we were to right click on this terminal we could also modify the behavior to be continue if true or to be stop if true. Because we have a stop button on our front panel we want it to stop if true. So we turn off execution highlighting and run this VI. We'll see that it will run much like before. It will run 10 times and immediately stop when the current loop iteration is set to 9. However if we run it again we can push the stop button in the middle, and that will cause the loop to stop at that iteration. One other really important point to discuss when we're talking about loops is the placement of a delay inside the loop. Depending on the desired behavior, it may be beneficial to have the loop run as fast as possible, in which case there is no reason to put a delay inside the loop. However, as is often the case with while loops in particular, the loop is used to handle user interface events. We do not want it to be running as fast as possible, so it is advantageous to place a delay block inside the loop. Let's just run a very quick example. If I were to delete the delay entirely and change the number of times to run to be some very large number, when we start the loop running, we can see the iteration counting very, very quickly. I'm going to allow the loop to stop now. Now I'm going to show the Windows Task Manager, which is showing the CPU usage while the VI is running and while the system is running. Notice with it idle, my CPU usage is idling around the 10-15% range. If I start this VI, CPU usage is at 100%. The reason for that is that we have a loop running as fast as possible when that may not necessarily be required. When I stop the loop, notice how it's not very quick to respond. The CPU usage drops immediately. If I replace the delay block within my code, and even give it a very, very short delay, such as one millisecond, let's observe the behavior when I start my VI. We see that the CPU usage is still back in the very low range, in the 20 to 30 percent. And of course, the loop iterations are going much more slowly. So it's important to understand and use this piece of information carefully when you're designing user interface loops. When it's not necessary to run quickly, make sure that there's a delay inside your loops.